Welcome everybody. It's Thursday's MUTV group chat. Thank you for, for joining us again. Hope you're well. And the lads are here. Maisie, Wes, Danny and Ben. Guys, you okay? Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Looking sharp. Wes, what happened there? A little, little trim? Yeah, um, no more messing about now. It's come off. Back to normal. Who's done that? Little ones. I touched it up at the end, but yeah. Let's, um, first of all, just bring some reaction from, from yesterday's show. This, is, this involves you, actually, Maze. An email from Gareth in South Wales who says, hey, just want to thank you all. The group chat is brilliant. Um, it's keeping us going, lifting spirits in this tough time. So well done, everyone. But he also says, got one question for you. We see the All the Goals programs on MUTV, but I've not seen Maisie All the Goals. Surely you've got a two and a half minute slot to fill somewhere. I see that harsh, Maisie. How many goals did you end up scoring for United, by the way? Eight. That's a short hey. program, in fairness, so isn't it? Oh, that is a short I'm, program. How many did you score? <laughs> Very good point. Very good point. So, yeah, but it's still, it's maybe, it is a possible program with replay. So, yeah. you've been a bit harsh there, Gareth. Maybe it'd be longer than mine. <laughs> how many was it, Ben? None. Exactly. <laughs> what a cracking show that would be. Yeah, um, Melter. <laughs> um, also, um, some YouTube reaction. We had Louis Sahar on yesterday. This one from Nathan. Love Sahar. Get Vidic on next. That would make my birthday. We'd love to have an Emmanuel, obviously. This once a red, always a red. Love to have the other guys helped out Sahar when he joined. Pity about his injuries. A great career still. Stay safe, mate. Um, this one as well. The bit at the start of the show was so true. Playing out the remainder of the season shouldn't be on the cards. Obviously, that was a long, long topic for discussion yesterday. This one said, sorry, Stuart, is James Gardner your son? He's my United player on the United app. I love him. He's Gardner. I'm Gardner. So that's the slight <laughs> difference. So clearly, no, he isn't. And yeah, and this one as well saying, Ben Thorny looking cool whilst doing his mafia hitman impression and Maisie being his usual caring, sharing, full of empathy self. Has, has Ben got that look, do you think? The mafia hitman look? Yeah, so the Salford Posse, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's an angry man. We know that. We know that. Oh, yeah. program. He's an angry man. So thank you for that reaction as well. And this one from Tunku on Twitter says some nice things about the show. Also saying the Daily Show on MUTV. Such a blessing. Keeps me connected to my club. I look forward to it every day. Tunku, thank you for that. Really do appreciate um, all of the reaction. MUTV at manunited.co.uk if you want to get in touch. All right, let's speak to our, our guest today. Brilliant player for this club, 464 appearances, won everything, including five Premier Leagues. Now, of course, a key member of Ollie's backroom staff. Michael Carrick joins us. It's great to have you with us, mate. How are you? Hi, Stuart. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Um, yeah, it's just getting used to this different routine, really, and then, then trying to get used to what, what's coming next um, <laughs> in between at the moment, a bit of limbo. But um, yeah, I'm good, thanks. What, what, what's more difficult, looking after 25 to 30 Premier League footballers or, or homeschooling? <laughs> I tell you what, there's not much in it. <laughs> uh, there's not much in it. Yeah, I think there's a big enough challenge for both. Um, yeah, try, trying to keep on, on top of both as well, to be honest, at the same time. Um, on calls with the boys, on, 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 um, on group sessions with the, with the boys. Um, trying to work that around around the kids as well, but I must admit my missus is taking over the teacher role more than me. She's probably better at it anyway with the kids. You, you mentioned being in touch with with the players or with Ollie and the coaches. How does that work? How often are you in touch, and uh, on what sort of things happen at the moment? In kind of phases, we, uh, different phases. To the start, we kind of left the lads a little bit alone, you know, because. Um, we were quite relaxed about it, and, and probably stensed that it could, it could be a good few weeks, if 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 not two or three months at the start of it. So we were conscious of of, of not being too intense with them uh, at the start, and and trying to gradually increase it as, as we go. And um, that's it this week. Or the all kind of on compulsory um, sessions, so we're all in uh, up until now. It's been quite optional, really, but. Even given an option, I think it tells the story probably how bored they are that most of them are on it anyway, <laughs> um, which is good. I think they're, they're just desperate to, to come back. You know, I think they're, they're looking forward to to getting back and getting back to what they know best. And so, yeah, just increasing it as we go and, and, and being in touch rev regularly every day, uh, every midweek day, uh, or every weekday we're on it and 
yeah, we're just trying to stay in touch and, and seeing what's next, like everyone else. Do you, when eventually the season, well, if or when the season starts or restart, do you know sort of how long players would ideally need to be ready? Because obviously it's been a two, well, two months, is it now, since we played? How long would it take for them to be sort of match ready? Yeah, it's, it's such a difficult thing to call um, because because it's it's unprecedented, you know, to, to be in this situation. So um, you're kind of using your experience. You obviously we've got we've got the experts in the fields to, to judge that. But at the same point, uh, the boys will know, you know, even coming back for pre-season, some lads come back the first few days of pre-season and they're flying, and other lads take you don't see them until September because it takes it takes five or six games, and probably I was one of them to get started. Um, so it, every club's going to be in that situation, and, and um, <coughs> it's, it's a balance of, of it's, it's the injuries as well of prevent, prevention. The injuries you can't expect them just to be training on their own at home and, and, and wherever they can get out and train, and then all of a sudden, within such a close um, short space of time, then expect them to play in what what will be a Premier League game. So that that is a the concern it's probably not so much the fitness and getting to the fitness levels it's it's the injury prevention really when we do get back and I suppose making sure the lads are sort of mentally okay must be a part of this as well I suppose if they've got family abroad or anything like that everyone's worried about their families of course and players no different is that something you need to check out players how they are not physically but that's priority well. yeah I think that's priority I think you've got to you you want to make sure they're all right. Every everyone's so different, like you say. Some some are um, still in digs. The younger boys still living in digs. Some some are back with with the parents. Some some obviously have got um, families here, and some have got gyms. Some haven't got gyms. You know, it's, it's all sorts of different um, um, things that you've got to balance, and they've got to balance. But primarily, we're talking about getting fit, back playing games. Really, it's about are they okay. Um, like like all of us, you know, make sure if your friends and family are okay, and obviously they're they're part of our family. So um, we want to make sure that first and foremost, as humans, that they're all right and they're on a level with that. And then the sport and the, and the job and the lifestyle can come after it. Lads, do you want to dive in and speak to Karis? Amazing. No, I was just going to say that before, obviously before the break, the lads were flying. We're getting into, or we seem to be getting into. You know, a bit of a routine of winning games, clean sheets, and obviously this has come at the wrong time. Do you see? Do you see us getting straight back into it in, in that sort of thing, or will it take a little bit of time to to get back up to speed? I'd hope so, Mezzy. I think because because you're in the right frame of mind, and the lads were getting in good habits and a good understanding, and things was clicking a little bit, um, and you could you could see it was there was definitely a progression. Um, like I said, really, it's it's hard to know. We're hoping for it. The signs are there. Um, the signs are still there from the boys. How how engaged they are, how how um, and what they've shown recently. And 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 I don't really, I don't doubt that they'll be fine when we get back. But because it's so different, there is that element of of the unknown which creeps yeah. into it. But um, it's a it's such a good group. The spirit's fantastic. It's come on loads. The spirit's great, and I, I I'm looking forward to it. You know, we have got a full squad to pick from competition for places, you know, what's the team going to look like? Who's going to come back, um, you know, like I said, and looking sharper and, and come back quick. So there's, there's a lot to take on, but I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I think there's certainly exciting times to come. Two new players coming back as well. Yeah. But Paul should be fit by then and Marcus should be fit as well in the next two or three weeks. So obviously it's fantastic news for everybody. No, it's great news. And I think if we look back at the season, really, we've always been, we've always had... Um, what you'd call, you know, some of the bigger players or, or important players yeah. out. It, 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 and we've never probably had our strongest team, not for a long time. When I say strongest team, I mean like the, the, whole squad, the, the, the bulk of the squad fit to pick from, you know. And um, so now I, th I think it's great. I think no one, you know, uses players that when you've got that competition as well and, and it, it does spur you on, you know, when you've got that in, yeah. in your position, not the rivalry where it's the hatred one, but the rivalry, the competitive one, where it's like you're pushing each other in training and, and in games to, without probably realising at times, in the back of your mind, you know, if I don't play well, he's, gonna, he's got a chance of playing. And, and I think everyone benefits from that. Ben. Morning, Mike. Are you OK? Hey, Ben. I'm just, uh, just going to ask you that Stuart uh, touched on it at the top of the show that 
you know, you've won everything domestically um, in the game. And I actually think we probably would have been a hell of a lot closer to winning a World Cup if you'd have had more caps. Uh, but that, that aside, are there any of those accolades that you treasure more than any other? The, the, when, listen, winning the Champions League is, 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 is for me is the ultimate of, of what I've achieved. Um, that feeling that night in, in Moscow um, was, was pretty special. Got a few pictures um, dotted around of me and Wes dancing around with that. Or that trophy that night. That was a special night. Um, on a personal one, to be honest, the one that meant a lot to me was the Players' Player of the Year in 2012-13. Um, um, the last time we won the league. Because it, it meant a lot because it, the lads see you every day. And, and I always, personally, you know, you want you want the trust from the lads. You, you I was kind of a team player. That's kind of, I always enjoyed that side of it. So to get the respect off the lads is on a personal level which I'm not really big on personal ones but that, that meant a lot to me that you mentioned earlier on um Michael that you said we sort of clicked clicked really just as just as a lockdown came we 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 clicked and obviously that did coincide with with um Bruno coming in the side as well and some people have have kind of compared some of his qualities to skulls a player you play with so often but can can you see can you see that from from Bruno yeah, listen, he's he's got great qualities. I think it's a, it's a little bit unfair to, in some ways to to compare him to Scalzi. Um for both of them. I think they're both individual. It's it's sometimes a bit too easy to then tag them with with a name who who previously gone before them. And um, Bruno's his own player. He's he's got great attributes, um, and he's he's made such a difference. And it's not very often. It, it can be a tough club to come into and make a big impact straight away. You know, sometimes it can take time to to fit in and kind of get used to your surroundings because it's quite daunting and at times. So, but he came in and um, probably what we were looking for at the time. You know, it, it, the, the timing was the tw- timing was right for in and around the squad of that little bit of a boost and something. And um, but he's de- he's he's got an eye for a pass and he doesn't. He, what, what I like about it, he's not phased by that, that giving it away. You know, he's trying to do the right thing, and if, if he gives it away once or twice, and he, he'll go again and try it again. And I think we've all seen that with the with the, the passes and the, the, the assists. But um, and I'm sure he, he, he'll score more goals. So he's had a massive influence on us. That that final game before the lockdown um, in Austria. Obviously, what we now know is when we when we do come back, it's going to be behind closed doors. That was behind closed doors, and it was so weird being there. So weird. What what was it like for you, and how difficult will it be when we do come back, when every game will be behind closed doors? If you probably asked the lads, they probably didn't like it as much because they can hear me and Ollie and the coaches <laughs> all shouting at them. So it's better for us. So you could you could tell them what to do because they can hear you, and they've got no excuse to ignore you. Um, but yeah, it, it it was it was strange in a way, but then actually you just down you down the business, you know. So it's um, yeah that that little bit maybe of extra adrenaline, emotion, and and that that, that you get from the fans, you, we're not going to have that. But in terms of um, how you approach it, um, your jobs within the game, and that stays the same. That stays the same. It's just you're going to lose that that feeling of of the atmosphere, which obviously I'm, I'm not saying anything we don't know, but that that's why we love the game, that's why we play at the top level, to feel Old Trafford bouncing on a, on a, um, on a big occasion. It's something we all kind of crave, so we're not going to have that, but in terms of preparation and, and how you kind of execute it and go about it, then it's, it's pretty much the same, or hopefully will be the same. It's like, because the last game at Old Trafford, the atmosphere was probably the... One of the um, unbelievable atmosphere, wasn't it, against City? I suppose that does show the difference that a crowd can make, which it suddenly takes is out of the equation for when we come back. Yeah, it's that theatre, isn't it? It's, it's what you know. Any any fan, or any player, anyone who's been involved, and in, in you mention a night of of something like that, like the last game or one of the big nights that's gone in the past, and it brings a smile. You know, it almost gives you a little goosebumps at times because you that it's that experience, that emotion, that feeling that you get. And unfortunately, you might you know you might not quite get that in, in in when there's no one else really watching, and it's just just the players on the pitch and, and a few around the edges. So um, that's a shame. It's it's where we are. You know, it's what we've got to deal with, and it's something that I have to say the boys dealt with ever so well when when we when we did play that game behind closed doors. I thought they applied themselves 
ever so well because you, you're never sure how it's going to go. And, and mentally, it's a challenge to then, when the juices aren't quite flowing at times because you, you feed off what the lads are used to, you're feeding off the occasion and, and what that brings. And sometimes, you know, you go into games and it doesn't quite, and you've got mentally, you've, you've got to get yourself in the place. So that's going to be the challenge. They've done it well for the last game, but I think that's going to be the challenge for everyone to adapt. Uh, and who does that best will obviously come out on top. We, we um, had Kieran on the on the group chat um, last week. Was I can't even remember because it was days merging to one. But um, how are you enjoying that? You know, working with Kieran and uh, and Ollie has spoken about the, the work that you both do and how important it is. But how how you were enjoying the sort of being part of the backroom staff with him? Yeah, really enjoying it. Kieran's a terrific coach. I, I've seen it straight away when. Um, Probably two or three years ago when he was coaching the under 18s and I was still playing in, in international weeks with, as, as the boys will know international weeks when there's not many players left you kind of end up training with the 23s and the 18s and mix it up and Kieran would take a fair bit of that uh, them sessions and I'd seen from my own eyes then what a good coach he was and um, he's, he's, he's helped me through immensely I've lent on him a lot um, coaching was new to me you know you, it's very different to playing, but you, you, I, know, I knew the environment, so I could help him with certain things with being around the first team. But the coaching side, he's been terrific. So um, I've got a lot to thank him for. I've learned a lot so quickly off him, but he, I have lent on him an awful lot. But um, we've got a nice mix as a coaching group at the moment. So uh, there's a nice spirit in it and we kind of look after each other, which, which helps us all improve. He was talking about his excellent, we were talking about his excellent 5K time in the 5k challenge and he said you were more of a long distance man is that fair a bit more of a plodder is that what he means <laughs> well he didn't say that <laughs> uh, to be fair there's some there's been some crazy quick times in the um from the from the from the players some of the some of the players are running quick and then 5k so i started thinking about oh, i might try and have a go and keep involved with this and start putting my times in that group and quickly realized like nah, i'm not at that level anymore <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I don't mind a little bit longer, 10K and 12K. I've done the, the Great North Run, which was, which was 20K. And, um, I, quite, I, I don't mind that. I've never done it as a player, obviously, but I've got into that a little bit and kind of freeze my head from the stresses uh, of the day in, day out. So, um, I don't mind that the longer run. We got Wes <laughs> doing it. It, it, was, it was not pretty at all. Not pretty in the end. It's How long did you Wes? <laughs> no, yeah. com no comment. <laughs> well, you're running. Where's 5k? Yeah, the 5k time. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. hilly where I live, and that's all I'm going to say. It's very hilly. <laughs> Blame in the hills already. <laughs> <laughs> they don't show up on them times, do they? Them hills. Not at all. Don't put it into consideration. <laughs> Obviously, I know the club's been doing a lot during this horrendous time. Um, obviously, by the foundation as well. But and what about your own foundation? I mean, getting involved in some projects to help people. Yeah, it's it's been it's been a challenge the same because a lot of the the, the projects which we we um, we team up with Man United Foundation to to put on uh, the street reds, Carrick Street Reds in Stratford. But obviously, you know, that project can't run as as it. As it's set out to run, so there's been challenges to adapt. Um, we're, we're still out there. We're still funding the funding, still there. And we're put, still trying to change and, and, and help in different ways, exactly like the Man United Foundation is doing. And we're working together with that. We're still with Newcastle United Foundation as well as as, as well as other projects. But um, fortunately, we're we're in a position where we can we can keep the funding going at the moment. And um, you know, it's so it it hasn't affected us that way. It's just more. It, it, kids that we're trying to help it's, it, you know they're, they're not in the position to be able to attend the session so that's difficult and, it, and it's quite sad for us in a way that we feel we want to help but we can only help in a limited way um, but I have to say the Man United Foundation have been amazing <clears throat> they've been amazing in, in adapting and um, how they've changed in, in supplying different services you know whether it's food whether it's um, Pencils, pens, paper for, for for children to do the homework that they've been given, and all sorts of different things. So we're we're, st we're still got, it's still ongoing. We're looking forward to getting back to normal, of course, for everyone. But there's different ways that we're helping, and um, it's just that frustrating that you want to help you want to help that little bit more, but obviously we've been limited. Just saying, Michael, you obviously worked under um, 
well, the, the best manager of all time. Um, worked under managers with brilliant records in Van Gaal and, and, and Mourinho. Are, are you are you looking at some point in the distant future? You might want to take on a managerial role, or can you look at it at the moment and think coaching really suits you? Yeah, I think it's difficult to plan ahead in many ways like that, too. I think um, maybe sort of part of me thinks, yeah, one day I'd like to have a go at it. And then sometimes I see how it is sometimes and I think, oh, man, I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> and you see what really goes on. You think, oh, I'm not sure I want to go down that route. But um, yeah, there is a part of me that one day thinks maybe I'll have a go. But at the same point, that's not really on my radar at the moment. I'm, I'm, um, I'm learning off Ollie. But I'm not consciously learning off them, if you know what I mean. Right? I'm, 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 I'm enjoying the role I've got and um, trying to make the most of it and being as best as I can at that, really. And I think naturally I'll, I'll, I'll learn as I go and pick things up. Um, but yeah, certainly at the moment, that's, it's not, it's not on my radar. The years to come, maybe. But football is football, you know. We don't know what's around the corner, <laughs> so uh, it's difficult to plan that one. Yeah, Wes is your number two, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, get running. Shut up. <laughs> you, you won't be joining in training if Wes, though. You'll have to be the floater because you'll just be taking people out. <laughs> Them days are gone, mate. <laughs> Michael, going back to your, your, like you said, you about the 2008 Champions League final. Stepping up for that penalty that you took, obviously scored. What was going through your head? Obviously, don't miss, but. Did you know where you were going to put it? Or? Yeah, I knew, and Maisie, I knew where I was going to put it. I have to tell you, though, it's the, worst, it's the most awful feeling, the most horrible feeling in the world. I don't, yeah. I don't unless you're like the ultra con uh, confident, super arrogant, pure self belief, I don't think you can enjoy that situation, really. It's so much to lose. You're thinking about so much to lose in the back of your mind. Um, that was a horrible, horrible feeling, but I knew where I was going to put it. I kind of went down to that was my favourite one. My, my most natural one, so I thought if, if there's ever a time to do it, then just go with what you know best. Um, and I, I'd be lying if I wasn't praying that he dived the wrong way, like, um, <laughs> and luckily he did. But it's one of them things, you know, so many great players have, have, have miss, missed it that, in that situation over the years, and you just it can happen to anyone, you know, it's just praying it doesn't happen to you, thankfully. Well, Ronaldo missed it straight after you, didn't he? Yeah, that's what I mean. And, and, and he's missed other ones as, as as well. I think he's missed ones from Madrid and, and shootouts. And it's, you know, that that's that's how it is. That's how unfortunate it can be at times. But um, from to go to the, that feeling of, I wanted to get out of the way. I wanted to be second, really. I wanted to do it early. Uh, certainly second or third. Third was the latest. I didn't fancy go to number four or number five. I wanted to get it done. So number two suited me quite nicely. And, once that I was out, the relief was just immense. It was just immense knowing that um, I've, I've kind of done what I could do, and then still didn't enjoy the rest of it, mind you, until until the end. But that once that end, wow, what a feeling! What a feeling when when Edwin, Edwin said that. Whereas that was that was amazing, wasn't it? It's was nice, yeah. yeah. How long is the walk? <laughs> when you're making that walk, how long does that take? And what goes what, through your mind? I jogged. I jogged. I jogged, I couldn't walk. I thought, the longer I've got to think about this, the worse it's going to get. So I thought, um, I've, I've kind of always done it when I've been in shootouts. I've jogged. As soon as it's kind of up, the, the one in front of me's gone, I thought, I need to get this over as quick as I can. Because, as I said, the longer you think, the, the more things go through your head, then it can spiral downwards quickly. So I thought, if I'm in a good place at the minute, I'm going for it. So I, as quick as I could, I got there and put the ball down and took it as, 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 as best I could. It's been, I mean, I was just trying to think, it's, 50, it's pretty much 15 years you've been up here now. 15 years. Um, so many highs, uh, not very many lows, but you look at it now, do you, do you look at it and think, yeah, we're right, we are right on our way back, if you like, to where we want to be? There's certainly a feeling amongst, uh, amongst the players, amongst us, the staff, I think in and around the club, there's that seems to be a really good feeling building. Um, not getting ahead of it because we haven't achieved anything yet by any stretch. So uh, not getting carried away, but there's, cert there's certainly a, a, a nice connection around the place. And I, and I think um, we're trying to do things in the right way. You know, I think um, the way Ollie's came in and, and he's doing everything for the good of the club, for the good of, and not the good of the club as in inside the club. He's talking about the club of, of 
the whole club, the fans, everyone that in, in what kind of it means and the connection with everyone. And I think I got that's quite powerful in, as it builds in in in, in time. Um, and I think that gets you through tough patches as well, which at times we've we've had to deal with. But if you're doing it for the right reasons and you're meaning well, and, and you see this progression, and everyone realizes that you're doing it for the right reasons, then um, hopefully that means more. And, and yeah, hopefully we can carry on um, as, as on, on the progression and that curve that, that we have been on. And um, but yeah, I do feel that, as I felt all along, to be honest. Even when we had that, we've had them runs and, and over the last year or so, and. Uh, they haven't been easy to deal with, but at the same point, I've always thought we'll be all right. You know, we'll be all right, and um, time will tell if if that pans out. But at the moment, I'm uh, quite excited with what's ahead. Listen, mate. Thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time, and I uh, hope everything goes well, continues to go well. Thanks very much for joining us. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Nice, Carrie. Cheers, Paul. Hello, Carrie. Yeah, great to have Michael Carrick with us on the group chat. All right. Um, so that's it from us just one more show to go this week thanks for your company as ever and um lads see you again very soon take care Bob. Bit, Stu. Yeah, mate. Yeah.